Hey everyone, so I had a set of these chameleon markers come my way, so I'm going to be sharing with you a bit about what I've learned about how to go about these markers. Now, because working with these markers is such a new and different experience to any other, I definitely haven't figured out the best way about how to use them yet, which leaves you all with a lot of room to only improve on everything I'm going to show you. All right, cool. So here are some of the markers. Uh, I'm just going to be using one of them just to show you how much you can get out of just one. Then I found just keeping a spare scrap piece of paper next to you just helps if you want to do any tests on just to see how dark your marker is before you start using it. All right, so how these markers work is that they come in two parts. So you'll have the, the part for the toner and then you'll have the part for the color ink. So that when you combine the two tips, like I'm doing right there, and make sure to keep it upright so that the toner runs down into the color ink. What actually happens is that the toner pushes back the color ink and depending on how long you leave it on for, when you start using the brush, uh, the ink gradually starts to come back. That's what pretty much gives you your darkening blends within your strokes. Now, when I apply the toner, I normally apply for about 10 to 20 seconds. Uh, that also depends on the, the darkness of the marker that I'm actually using. I've noticed that the darker markers, like uh, some of the darker blues, blacks, and sometimes even this very brown, sometimes they do need a bit of extra toner just because it needs more toner to push more of that, uh, that ink saturation back. Whereas the lighter markers don't need as much since there's not going to be such a saturated amount of ink that needs to be pushed back. So right now I'm kind of starting off a bit slow. I could have taken the darkness a bit further right now, but I still want to get uh, a certain amount of blending just to kind of be safe for right now. And the more I get into this, you'll see the more, the faster this process will become. So yeah, throughout this video, you're going to be seeing me reapply that toner on quite a regular basis. So I'm just going to be speeding through that so you can see the real important parts of me actually using the marker. One thing I'd suggest when you're not actually using the toner is that since you're most likely going to have it in your other hand, make sure just to seal it off with your thumb just so that it doesn't dry out. What I've found so far to work best with these markers is to start off by shading in the darkest areas of the artwork. Once I've then eventually worked in the, the darkest points of my hair, I then to pretty much bridge the, the white of the page uh, from the, the darkest points of the hair, I'll then start adding those mid-tones and then as the marker becomes darker, I'll at least have the darker tones of the hair to basically retreat into so that I can still carry on working with my darkening marker as I go. So from here onwards, I'm pretty much just going to be carrying on to apply the darkest shades of the hair while keeping in mind my light source. That is the first and one of the most important things that needs to be defined first before even doing anything. Right now, right now my light source is going to be coming from the, the top left side of the screen which eventually you'll start to see how that affects how I'm going about the hair. I found that working on smaller areas or areas that are at least uh, segmented, like for example, how I've uh, sectioned off parts of the hair, uh, those areas are actually far easier to actually blend with, whereas larger areas, more open areas are far harder just because there is going to be an element of those brush strokes coming through, which will be quite difficult to hide sometimes. Now, how I get around this is I actually have taken advantage of these strokes so that basically they can help simulate the texture within hair so that I don't have to worry about trying to blend too much unnecessarily. In that way, I'm not trying to force anything and I'm just going to be going with what these markers and my skills will basically allow me right now. So I'd say in the beginning when working with these as a beginner basically I'd say the most important thing is just to familiarize yourself with how these markers work and just play around with them don't try and think that you're gonna be achieving amazing blends first off 
because these work quite differently to other markers and yeah you are basically going to have to change the way you think about how you apply your strokes and in that way you're only going to get better results i mean right now i haven't been working with these too much and already i've worked to this level so these levels that i'm producing right now can be taken so much further so in that way it really does leave you guys with so much room to still play with I welcome you guys to try and copy what I'm doing right now with these markers. You know, over the years, I've really learned a lot by doing studies, by, you know, copying photos and other artists as closely as I can to try and understand what they're doing and the decisions they're making. So yeah, if you guys are up for it, I seriously encourage you to copy this very artwork because you'll probably find that when doing so, you might be able to notice how I could have gone about things better and in your own ways, you can even improve on this to make it look even better. Alright, well there's not too much more I can actually share with you guys about these markers, so what I'm going to be doing is letting this run until the end and then I'll catch you guys again with a few final words. So from here on, I'm just going to be working in more of the, the shadows and all just keeping in mind my light source, making sure that, you know, I make it obvious that the light is coming from the top left of the screen so that things gradually on her head are going to be becoming darker to the, on the right side of her head, almost kind of similar to lighting a sphere basically and so yeah I'm gonna be working in more of those shadows and then I'm gonna be blending in more of the transition between the whitest part of that shine of the hair more into the the shadows of the hair just so things are a bit cleaner and yeah basically smoother in the blends basically in that way I gotta make sure that my marker isn't isn't going too dark so I gotta make sure that I apply enough toner to the tip so that I can use it for long enough without having to reapply the toner uh, too often. I'm still going to be applying it, you know, a fair amount, but yeah, I just got to make sure that I keep those lighter shades happening. And if it starts to get too dark, you know, I stop and just apply more of that toner. But yeah, you'll see that a bit later when I eventually start getting to that more. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in a bit. Thank you. 
Alright everybody, so this pretty much brings us to the end of this video. As you can see, I've really, you know, saturated my ink and applied layers of layers of brush strokes. And doing that really helps me to, you know, push my blends from, you know, the shadows to the mid-tones into the highlights of the white of the page that much more. So yeah, anyway, I hope you've learned a thing or two from this, but I will say that your learning will mostly start happening when you start practicing and messing around with these markers. Because everything I'm saying, all the knowledge that, you know, I can share with you guys, isn't going to really count for much if you're not putting it into practice. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy these markers. These definitely do provide a new experience. So yeah, have fun and take care everybody.